Now, welcome to the postmodern world. In fact, can I just ask you one more question? Yeah. Well, come on up here. All right. Come back here. This is going to be a grand experiment for postmodernism. We live in the 21st century where all truth is valid truth. I'm going to tell you, we're going to do a little role play. Just pretend with me for a moment. But I want you to be yourself still. All okay. right? This is what I believe. I believe that the God of the universe is Elvis Presley. Do you know who he is? Yep. Okay. I believe that it's Elvis Presley. And I believe if right before I die, I sing You Ain't Nothing But a Hound Dog three times, I'm going to spend eternity in Graceland in the Contiki Room with Elvis eating peanut butter and banana sandwiches for all of eternity. That's what I believe. Am I wrong? I don't know. Thank you very much. Do you know anybody Thank that's... But do you know anybody that's... All right, am I wrong? I don't know. Come on. I don't know if you're wrong. Just say I'm wrong. Come on. I'm not going to go... <laughs> if it's true to you, then room. it's true. No, it's not. Okay. It can be wrong. The intensity of my belief doesn't make it so. The object of belief makes it so. Do you hear the difference? The in Just because I really, really believe it, People have been really, really wrong, correct? Yeah. Right. And that's okay. Just the intensity of faith doesn't mean a thing. It's the object of faith. And if the object of faith is a carved idol, it's a worthless piece of wood. And if it's not the creator of the universe who says, I'm the only one and I will not okay, give my praise I can't, to another. Okay, but I can't believe in a God that will send my 11-year-old friend Soba just because she grew up in Hindu country to then hell. I can't believe. Reach to her, then reach no, out to her. No, she her. doesn't understand. <laughs> then learn the language. Do you really care about her? Yeah. Okay, if this is true, then you'd learn the language and you'd get over there right quick. Okay. See ya. You don't care that much about her then, apparently. Or you just don't think it's true. This is postmodernism. All roads don't lead to the same place. God would have to be... Do you know what schizophrenia is? Okay. Schizophrenia is you've got a bunch of different personalities and you believe a bunch of different things and it just you're all over the place. God would have to be that for that woman's statement of statement to be true. He'd have to be dingy to say, okay, if you worship a piece of wood, that's okay. If you kill somebody in the name of Allah, that's how you get to heaven. If you do really good and get rid of your desires, then you'll become a part of the great big cosmic nothingness. Or if you repent and put your trust in Jesus, then all of your sins will be forgiven. Or if you rub the Buddha's tummy, then maybe you'll go to a place and be reincarnated in the higher state. They don't all make sense. That doesn't make sense at all. God would have to be dingy to give out that different type of direction. He's not all of those things. He's one of those things. So if you want to, Take all the world religions and put them right here. Here they are. All the world religions that say do good and someday life will get better. Jesus stands over here and says, you can't do good. You're bad. You need to have your sins forgiven and I'll rescue you because I died on a cross. If you will repent and put your trust in me, all of your sins will be forgiven. So here's your choice. Either they're all right, Jesus is right, or nobody's right. There's your choice. So pick any one of these that you want and work like nobody's business to make up for your sins somehow. And you better hope that the deity is in a good mood. Call out to God and he will save you or just bag the whole thing. Those are the three options. But don't put Jesus into this camp because he doesn't put himself there. He says, I am not like them. There is no other God but me. So either submit to him or reject him outright. But don't just say that he's another way because that is not an option. Listen to me though. If what I'm saying is true, just go with me just for a second, all right? If what I'm saying is right and that we're really bad sinners, would you confess that if God stepped off of his throne to come down to this earth to die for wretched, vile sinners, to take the punishment we deserve, would you at least grant me that is the most kind thing that anybody has ever done? What, kill his son? Yeah, for you, for you. Is that not the kindest thing that anybody's ever done? Would you grant me that? I didn't say you have to believe it. If it's true, is it not the kindest thing that anybody has ever done? It it's impossible to quantify. You can't quantify. Name a kinder act. Name a kinder act than God dying for the rebels, okay? We're not, imagine a king who ran a universe or ran his kingdom and he was kind and he was good and he took care of all of the servants but the servants formed a coup and all they fought against the king and they wanted to kick him off the throne and they said bad things and they disobeyed his laws and they scattered out in the forest because the king was not defeated and instead of the king sending out his troops to slay them on the spot which is exactly what they deserve 
He sent his son to plead with them, come unto me, all you who are weary and heavy laden, and I'll give you rest. I'll restore you to a right relationship with the king, even though you're a rebel. Imagine a king who did that. That's what the king did for us. It is the kindest thing that has ever taken place. The gospel of Jesus Christ is good news. But before it's good, you've got to understand you're bad. Otherwise, it means nothing, and he's a little trinket. You might as well put him on an altar and worship him when you feel like it or when you think you need a little brain buzz. Eh, eh, son. Yeah, anyways, off to the races. What are we doing first? Okay. Uh, Drive-by theology, you will learn. Bibliology, theology, eschatology, pneumatology, every tology that you ever wanted to learn. How to systematize the Bible so that all your theology fits into place nice and neat and tidy. How many lectures? 40, 40. 48.